there for your comments. We'll try to get to all of them during our sharing and prayer requests. If you're joining today in person, thank you. Please take a moment to fill out one of our welcome and attendance sheets in your pews, which also has space to lift up prayer requests. There's a, there's a spot for your email as well. If you'd like to get our weekly newsletter, we know what you do. There's lots going on in the life of St. John. You can also put your prayer requests. Uh, there's a, an easel uh, back in the foyer. Uh, you need to do that right away. Uh, if you plan on uh, lifting those up today in the worship. Finally, if you take a look at your bulletin to see our announcements of all the things going on in the life of the church, the life of the church, we have lots of great stuff going on that you want to be part of. And now, here are a few announcements. Thanks, Chris. Well, again, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome once again to the worship. And if this is your first time here, it's special. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. We're so glad that you're here tonight. I hope that you've come with us so far. Uh, if you come with small children, we do have our nursery open this morning, and it's just right out these doors. And a catty corner to uh, the service there. Please know that we, we welcome all kiddos in our worship space running around and shouting and saying amen and, and helping us worship. Amen. 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 Yeah. Uh, right after the worship, we have fellowship time in the chapter, which is actually right out these doors to my left. You'll see it always a great time for fellowship. You know what it is. Um, I have just a few things to lift up. One, I wrote this up in the uh, back of here. I was looking in your bulletin. It says, or on the inside of your bulletin, on the back of your bulletin, where it says the pumpkins are coming. Um, if you notice, it says uh, September 27th, it's our fifth Sunday of Papa. Uh, it's actually September 29th, and it's all going to be pumpkins bloom. And so I look forward to that. There are different kinds of pumpkins that might come. And apparently we can do other stuff with pumpkins as well. Um, so I also lift up uh, the winter wear distribution for Shiprock. It's never Wednesday, September 9th, it's actually Thursday. Uh, we will have our final book study tomorrow morning in the choir room, the pastor's book study. Um, and then after that, uh, we are going to resume our normal format of studying the scripture for the upcoming sermons in, in that series. We meet on Monday nights in choir room at 6 30. We will not have soul break this week as the leaders for soul break will be unlimited. We'll only pick up the following week and go from there. I want to highlight ancient traditions for contemporary peoples in our upcoming contemplative retreat. And it's going to be right here at St. John's next Saturday from 1 to 4. You can take a look at your bulletin for more details to see where we can RSVP. You can also start with the in the back uh, for more convenience and for what I can do. Finally, um, she's not here yet, and she's also preparing for a trip. Um, and so I'll thank her again when she comes here. But I wanted to offer a moment and just uh, thank you, Pastor Diane, for being here uh, while I was out of town. And if she comes, then I'll thank her personally. And if she doesn't, then remind me. And say, Pastor Diane, we're going to thank Pastor Diane for being here. That's a whole lot of words to say. That's what's going on in the life of the church right now. But that's not worship, is it? We gathered here today for worship. So who's ready to worship? I am never ready to worship. Let's set aside whatever we brought in with us today. We turn our attention to God and God's good word for us today. We have prayers, our prayers, and scripture. We begin with you.
Thank you. The prayer requests were uh, uh, prayers for moisture and thanksgiving for moisture, and then prayers that uh, I came back safe and sound. Those are my prayers to you. <laughs> um, at this time, too, is a prayer of thanksgiving, but also um, I, I want to take a moment and just first of all thank uh, you, Pastor Daniel, and thank you so much for your leadership and your pastoral Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. 
Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will be bursting with wine. The word of God for the people of God. And so we say, Thanks be to God. If the ushers would please come forward. Father, we're grateful for these gifts about to receive. Thanks to each of those who are so generous in their giving. May, may these resources go to the enlargement and enhancement of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the one who spells sparingly will also read sparingly, and the one who spells bountifully will also read bountifully. Each of you must give as you may of your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful gift. And God is able to provide you with every blessing and abundance, so that by always having enough for everything, you may share abundantly in every good thing, as it is written. He scatters to God, he gives to the Lord, his righteousness is in the to everything. He who supplies seed for the sower, and bread for food, who will supply and multiply your seed for the sower, and increase, yeah, increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity. You will produce thanksgiving to God who us, who later in this ministry always supplies the needs of the saints, and also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. This is the word of God for the people of God, and see the other. Thanks be to God. We pray for you one more time. Yes, Lord, prepare us for the sanctuary. Whether we're sitting in a sanctuary or we are the sanctuary that we take out to the Lord. May the meditations of my heart and of our hearts be your way your sight, Lord. But we be careful to be people of God as we think about the strategy of generosity. Generosity of which you live. Stay on us and the generosity that will come to stay on others. Amen. If the title Extravagant Generosity is familiar to you, it's because a couple of years ago it was the whole thing for our yearly fall student chase series. And I know that you can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where I was from. No, I don't respect that. Um, <clears throat> well, when I got this slide here, it was a chapter in the current work of the meeting that the five practices of fruitful congregations. Um, it was expanded to be used as a stewardship series. It was a solid chapter, it was a solid series, it was great. So the theme of the theme of today is two words: generosity, extravagant. I always look at themes like generosity, stewardship, and expanded way of because I was thinking beyond money. That's what I'm really used to hearing. Right? Um, we should be appropriate with our money. Yeah. We're called multiple times throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament that we should be wise with our money and give to God in a way that reflects God's blessing for us. We're encouraged to set aside and give our first fruits to God, whatever that looks like. I'm a firm believer in that. Greg and I are, are firm believers in giving money to this particular community of faith that reflects what we believe and we feel that it reflects what we believe. That has to be practices as Christians of our time and prayers. But generosity as Christians certainly goes beyond money. Being a Christian is being generous with your, your money and your money causes, generous with your time to serve God with others and with others, generous with your love, generous with your great grace and joy and other fruits of the Spirit. How many of you try and wake up every day and say, I need to practice? Extravagant generosity with the love that I have for this world and others. Now I have a problem. I'm going to practice extravagant generosity with the grace that I show others today, the patience that I show others today. It's showing patience and grace and love when none sees merit. The status quo is keeping your mouth shut. Extravagant generosity is saying, I really need to practice patience and show grace, but I also love the way he loves the narrative. That's extravagant generosity as well. Your generosity extends more beyond the dollar amount. And your generosity is not transactional. Okay? So often we, we hear this just providentialist about that. Whether we're talking to church folks or just out in the world, and so many interactions that we have. Transactions, right? It is not a transaction. You're not going to hear a prosperity gospel message from me that, that gives, it makes you think that I can give God all that you want, and all that you have, and more that you can, you're going to get that sweet moment that you really, really want. Right? That's, <laughs> that's called Christian gifting and grifting, right? Are you ready? God, but 
what? We've got all the message. We've got all the stuff. The prosperity is not a bad word. Prosperity gospel, as it's called, is what it's called. So, I really like these passages in 2 Corinthians about generosity in Proverbs as well, uh, and, and giving and sowing and reading the faithful person's duties as part of the body of Christ. Now, I did read the first part that leads into this passage we just read. So often in Paul's letters, it's basically he starts in chapter 1, verse 1, and then just add comments to the rest of the letter to the end. That's the way he writes. Notice how I started off with it. So here's the point. This is where the 
the prosperity of the hospital takes that part of the makes giving transnational and that's what this you know, this small passage alone would make it mean so many different things. You know, giving to the church and God blessing you that speed but you always want to be able to care about the So your seed to this church campaign that God's gonna pay all of your overview bills that you just enrolled for those three years and the very big people in the middle. Look at that God provides for our lives. God works in tandem with our lives. Wants to work with us in our lives to guide us to, to provide provisions that we need so that we can bring God glory. Any provisions and sufficiency that is the stones. Okay, I want to hold up comparison. Comparison to the age of perspective happens when we compare these ideas to stone, cross, and time. And I take the concept. Any provisions and sufficiency that is the stones. Comes from himself or his personal faith. It's a self sufficiency way of looking at your religious self. All sufficiency is a gift of God, the result of God's grace, and everything else in life is details. You know, there's a Bible scholar that came across the name C.K. Barrett, and he puts it this way The stone's sufficiency is from himself, not from herself. Necessarily, for me, it's raised not from the quantity of the external goods and possessions, but from within. Since it means content with whatever external materials are available, whether they have many or few. How can you hear that? Okay, that's all we <laughs> Now you're really going to be listening to the rest of Paul, however, Seeking a very good Paul, however, is thinking of such a supply of the still goods as will permit the Christian to give some of them to others. They gave to the numbers of the goods. I'm going to back to that comparison. We will count self sufficiency versus God's sufficiency to do that together. We certainly see these ideas of stoicism in the world today as we only self reliance and self uh, sufficiency. But it's also quite often an external greed and placing ultimate value in the past of the world. Cast out a little stone, but it's kind of what we get today is that sort of thing. The stone group ultimately placed importance on the self, the greedy person, but ultimately placed importance on the wealth and advantage and status that wealth supposedly brings. We need to be greedy with any number of things. We most of all associate with you know, personal wealth and money and things like that. But who struggles with being greedy in your own time? Who struggles with being greedy when it comes to having a listening ear rather than talking about it? Yeah. It's right. We certainly see these ideas of stress as numerical. Really, Paul's not really doing that. Paul's not really shouldn't be doing that either. The message that carries across to Christians today. As Christians, we give Jesus something. And it comes from whatever abundance that God has given for us. We give uh, uh, generously, where there's not necessarily a, a particular activity, but an ongoing need. That abundance that we have, that we share, it is different for everyone. Paul was writing for Christians to give as generously as one can, based on the ways that God has blessed them, to give sufficiently that reflects the ways that God has blessed them. No matter what, Christians. There's a, there's a good work to be had that reflects the ways that God has been a blessing in your life with salvation and provisions in faith in this world. If we are Christians, we believe that God has given us some form of abundance that we don't think we can share. There are works that are not done to earn the extra healthy of salvation or something like that. They're not works that are done to prove yourself or, or someone else that, that you are a Christian and prove to yourself or something. There are really does the consequence of knowing and having faith in the God of your salvation in Jesus Christ. That's what leads to your extravagant generosity. So, in the book we've been basing this book series on Bishop Shansky, makes a statement that I've turned into a question that I believe we can all think about this week. In a section titled Generosity Enlarges the Soul, which I never believe is true, he writes, A faithful giver thrives from the joy of abundance rather than starves from the fear of scarcity. It's kind of hard, right? 
They can join us generously, consistently in ways that enrich people's souls and multiply the ministry and the church. I found this to be true personally, and I'm seeing it in the life of the church and in this church. I think that we can turn the first part of that question when it comes to how we approach generosity to you. It's a question. Am I thriving in the joy of whatever words I have? Or am I striving with a fierce character to be selfish? Am I thriving in the joy of whatever words I have? Or am I striving in some way with a fierce character? If you're not inclined to be generous in a situation, you need to analyze your motivations and behind them. Are they godly institutions? Are they based in, in fear and anxiety or maybe greed or having them in other parts of your life? Well, that's not going to be enough for you to accept. And there are times that you will discern and say, Nope, no, that's not where I need to be generous anymore. It's a question to ask yourself in a certain way because it's a much deeper reflection than just deciding what sorts of tithe and offerings you want to or don't want to the church. It's a much deeper reflection, isn't it? And I think it's a question that lines up with Paul's writings in the Corinthians about how giving is successful and faithful and marks the, the harvest and marks the harvest of your soul. Paul writes about this. He who supplies seed for sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Let's get it. See how Paul's going to encourage you to give so you can get that speed mode or wherever the ancient equivalent of the speed is. But it's about reading righteousness. It's about living life, earning life, and giving life if we live the life of a Christian. So be extravagant in your generosity, giving your to your church. Um, it's expanding what our generosity is. So the final part, this is where the other part that Paul's talking about. The final part of this message is that the church you are a part of means to be worthy of generosity. It means to be worthy of your generosity. Be generous, please. Be generous to the ministries of St. John's that keep our ministries and staff and all of us that have helped you place. You know, let's do that. Our community slips up because any moment we have to the suburb, we find ourselves in the light of giving right now. But we're currently covered because of the rates that we do. We have an abundance there, and we try to use that. But we're a little light again. So please give and give it generously. But make sure that St. John's is worthy of your generosity. Participate and find out who we are, where we are, what it comes to. That doesn't, by the way, this doesn't come up a lot in, in most of the stewardship that you read. Most of us are about an individual or a group of people who give what they should give and how often and, and why that's important. And then those are the value points to talk about. And they throw some scripture over and justify them as they give some of us to ordain my pain and some of us not. I find that this is very important for me about biblical practices. We all go looking for a church of, of any size to sustain giving the money you must have, giving of time and prayers and effort you must have. But I have learned that also the importance of your discernment in giving as well. I love the United Methodist Church because when we run as a ship, our structure is multiple levels of accountability when it comes to finances and ministries. And yes, there are struggles and challenges along the way, and, and at times that it falls short, just like any other organization. It's why we have an administrative council of the finance committee, the trustees committee, and other committee committees which contribute. To discern what generosity looks like in the life of St. John's. And then we have the responsibility of what to do with that generosity. Over the years of existence, I believe many years since 2021, over the years of its existence, any organization can be pointed out as doing great things with money, wise things with money, and otherwise things with money, incompetence with money, and sometimes all the way bad things with money. You don't hear that a lot, so. But it's, it's the reality of a struggling and thriving and surviving church. That's just 
the reality. And all of these factors impact the heart of the individual when it comes to generosity. So I say, help us to be worthy of your generosity. Help the church, St. John's, be worthy by being a part, by participating, by being active, by being generous with people's time, by not having an attitude in the church that, that the church is just going to do faith for you, or doing this faith stuff for you instead of that's not worthy for you in the church. Tithing, being extravagant of generosity, is not giving money and, and telling the organization, oh, I wrote a check, I wrote a bill for you, you know, if you get a chance to pay me a little bit, you know, it's No, it's, it's not going to here's money, and here's exactly what I want you to do. Yeah, I know that's the thing the spirit and mission of your organization, but I'm giving it to you better, you better tell the line, you know, that happens sometimes. Um, it's really more like, here's money, because I believe that there are things that St. John's is doing. And here's how I also want to take part in it. And here's how I also want to be present in worship with it. Here's how I also want to be present in serving these broken world in St. John's. And here are the ways in particular that I want to discern with you about what my vision may be. Say, I'm going to be a part of how our finances and everything else come together to achieve that vision. See, how that's not so transactional when it comes to our responsibility of extracting generosity, but the church has to be worthy. Each local community of the is going to be different. There's not going to be a single church budget that says that it runs like exactly what all have so much and so much and so much and so Stuff like that, but it's going to be today. In the end, God knows your heart. God knows your capacity for generosity. And heaven's capacity is today. Don't make a comparison to that being a father or most of the ones. I simply encourage you to give to this community of faith. With your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and discern by yourself and others what that's going to look like. It's such an honor to serve St. John's, to serve God's church with who I know of St. John's. It's great to see sympathy. It's great to fail with you. It's great to vision with you and to practice generosity with you and learn generosity from you along the way. If we want to be a healthy church, a fruitful congregation, instead of being young, then part of the week through being the next week, we're going to be wrapping up this series of, I hope that you've got some great things down here. It's been a great month. We're then going to start a thing called On the Moon Reflections about Migrations of Peoples Across the World. And it's going to be based on my time in Sweden a few weeks ago, learning from the world methods of healthful progress, a topic that we had our listeners who literally all over the world and talking about their own communities, what it looks like when people are clean and when people are better. It's kind of totally worth it. After that, we're going to start a series of tutorial paper as we move as a nation toward election. Isn't that going to be fun? I don't know. I think it would be worth it to be fair. You know, there, there's a lot going on in this election so far. I don't know. I'm speaking about it with all those who are fully unpopular to inherit. Amen? Amen. And I guess to anyone who is self good from the errors who reach that fever page for the benefit of the AAU library, I believe the church can think about these things and help you realize them once out of the world and out of town. I think we can also be more good as citizens of any nation, but this way in particular is really good. I know I'm not going to be preaching politics for the whole thing. Hopefully, we're going to be pretty faithless. For now, I challenge you to think of the words extravagance and generosity and how they currently apply to your life. Your church needs you. I don't want to talk about staying there. You know, we just, we have to sell them the Lord and they just don't want to find the worship space. So I right now, I'm going to come to the body and say, I'm going to talk about the church all over the world. Your church needs you. Your church needs to be 
you in all the ways that you can faithfully give and be generous. The world needs your faithful, extravagant generosity, all for the glory of God, so that God may So I want to challenge you for all of us this week. Is there what extravagant generosity means by for you? Let me know Christ is going to flow us. What would you have to tell us? Number 587, Bless Thou Gifts, Carry Me Play in the Heart, and Food, and we'll sing it twice. Please Thank you.